Hey guys, and welcome back to Pickleball King. So today, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. So today, as you could probably tell by the title of the video, we're actually gonna be playing with two mods. The first mod that we're gonna be playing with, as you can tell by the map, is the Decolonization mod, or I think it's actually called the Colonization mod. It'll be up on the screen, hopefully. And basically, as a, you play as a country and all this unclaimed territory, you can colonize using political power and then afterwards you can turn it into cores, which is kind of neat because it'll redraw the borders of the world. And one of the best parts of it is it is way less laggy than the Every State Independent mod because that mod is fantastic, but it is so incredibly laggy. And the next mod we're playing with is Battle Royale, which basically means after a set amount of time, every single nation will declare war on their weakest neighbor. And as soon as the peace treaty ends, a second war instantly starts off. So it's just constant war, just because I want this to be a rather chaotic game. So today I'm thinking we are going to play as France. So let's get started. All right, so we've loaded into the game and we are going to set the Battle Royale for two years. And this is just some basic tips. If you do play this mod for yourself, I would recommend reading them. But basically the shortened version of like the five words they say is up here. This is like your colonization upgrades. So it lets you like upgrade things. And as you play, you actually um, need to build a merchant ship and that lets you like colonize islands. As France, I wanna restore our historical borders. I wanna dominate Europe and perhaps we bring back the French empire. In addition, I've actually run this through an AI only battle a couple of times just because I wanted to see what happens in the game. And that's how I figured out we needed Battle Royale just because it helps with the wars a lot. And I found out that unsurprisingly, the US ends up dominating North America and they end up getting like 600 factories by 1939 and it's just insane. So I've decided to uh, make America a little more fun. So I've added a uh, historical El Salvador to New Jersey. We've got, um, Côte d'Ivior in Wisconsin, also very historical. We got Cypress down in Louisiana. And of course, we got Chad in Idaho, because where else would Chad belong? In addition, Japan gets really powerful in this setup, so I've decided to add Costa Rica to try to slow down the Japanese. Now, I don't think Costa Rica is actually going to survive, but they might just survive if they blend in, because their color is really similar to the unclaimed territory. All right, perfect, we've gotten our first expansion, but if you take a look, it's only a colony and we actually have to spend some extra political powers to turn it into a core. One of the nice things is that as we expand our uh, empire and we colonize, these states actually have factories in them. So as we grow, we actually get factories for free, which is lovely. All right, we've just finished our first focus, which has given us a bunch of political power. So we're actually gonna go ahead and spend some and build a merchant vessel with it, which should allow us to actually start colonizing islands and expanding our empire overseas. All right, I'm actually gonna colonize a little bit into Germany just because Wittenberg has a huge population of 5.10 million, which is really sizable because all of our other things that we've colonized so far are only about one to two million. So we're gonna take some land from the Germans, but I think it'll be worth it. The Germans and the Italians are both starting to encroach on us. As a, and as we can see, Europe is starting to fill up rather quickly. Africa is also getting filled up pretty quickly with just the Sahara basically left. And then Asia still has lots of room for expansion. And in terms of the Americas, it's still pretty empty. Unfortunately, Chad has not been expanding yet, which is kind of tragic. But it looks like Cyprus is doing a little bit. But as you can see, the U.S. is just absolutely popping off. All right, we have finished building our first exploration fleet, which means that we can actually go down this tree, allowing us to do overseas ventures. And let's see, does that allow us to start colonizing like these islands? No, we still need three light cruisers in order to do it. So we're gonna focus on some light cruisers for now. And hopefully we'll be able to colonize some islands around the world. I really wanna get Madagascar. I think if we could get Madagascar, that would be very neat. The first year has been completed, which means we only have one year until full anarchy breaks out all across the world. Right now, Europe has been mostly colonized and it's a pretty big mess. Asia, I think, is also fully colonized at this point. Japan has begun doing their imperial ambitions. As you can see, they're going after the uh, Pacific Islands and Indonesia. And the UK has also begun their colonial ambitions, seeing as they've gotten the Balearic Islands. And they've also are starting to claim uh, Crete, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to get some islands, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I think the UK might beat us to it. North America is interesting. We can just leave it at that. As you can see, the US popped off. I did not think they were gonna get California, which I think with them having California, they're actually gonna be completely unstoppable, but we'll see what happens. South America, well, 
a, um, I don't know. It's something. Africa doesn't really change much in this mod just because of how big the states are. And yeah, that's the world. All right, it's taken us quite a while. It's nearly 1938, but we finally have five light cruisers, meaning that we can go and colonize this tiny island, Cape Verde. And we've begun the French Empire officially. Let's go. All right, there we go. Cape Verde is colonized. And actually, it's not bad. It actually has a decent amount of factories. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. All right, it's December 24th, 1937. It's Christmas Eve, which means in just about a week or so, Total chaos will break out all across the world. So this is what the world map looks like right now. Europe is a bit of a mess. Luxembourg actually did pretty well for itself. I don't think they're going to survive. Our military is pretty decent. Africa stayed mostly the same. Japan has carved itself a decent empire at this point. Asia is also a huge mess. The US is, well, disgusting. Um, especially the Chad borders. Um, and the US borders as well. It's just snakes around everyone. South America hasn't changed, and yeah, that's what the world looks like right before chaos. So, let's get into the pain part of this game. Alright, the battle royale has officially begun. I thought we were going to go after Luxembourg, but it turns out we're going after Brittany, so we gotta quickly do a full 180 on the whole army. Alright, Brittany did manage to get some land taken from us, but that's alright because now the army is moving in and we're stabilizing the front line, and we'll crush them in a second afterwards. Brittany has fallen, and now we're at war with the other French imposter. It should be pretty easy to take them down, because luckily our army is already pretty close, and they're at war with the Catalonians, so I think this will go pretty well. Unfortunately, looking over at the Americas, it looks like everyone has decided to bully Chad, which is incredibly sad. I was really hoping Chad would win this one, even beating us, but I don't think Chad is going to last for very long. Alright, today is April 1st, which is a very big day in our nation's history because it's the day we have eight light cruisers, as you can see right here, which means we can finally go ahead and colonize Madagascar. Now this, now this is the forming of a real empire. Let's go. Today is a sad day. Today is the day Chad finally capitulated. Rest in peace, Chad. Rest in peace, Chad. You will be always remembered in our hearts as the great nation of Idaho. All right, we've just finished a war with the Austrians, giving us these lands, and we're still at war with the Dutch, so I'm trying to do a naval invasion. But unfortunately, Spain just declared war on us, or rather, we declared war on Spain, and we have no forces because I thought we would declare war on the Swiss. So we need to really quickly mobilize our army. I think we're actually going to lose all of this, but I think that's all right. I think we'll be able to get it back, but it's been an, a slightly unfortunate turn of events. All right, they, we don't have a lot of troops on uh, the border, but they don't have too many, and I think we might be able to walk into Madrid real quick. If we could do that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, it looks like Madrid's going to be open for the taking. And there we go, Madrid's ours. Okay. All right, the first year of Battle Royale is about to be over, and this is what the world is looking like. Europe has really been consolidated with us, the UK and Germany being the major players, and the UK has actually begun to colonize Africa at this point. Asia is still a big mess, but there are some big powers rising up in it. Africa has remained mostly the same, except Ethiopia and Zaire both popping off. America is at war with Cote d'Ivoire, and America has a huge industrial advantage, but I don't think they have enough troops for the whole borders causing them issues. Japan got Alaska, kind of interesting, and Mexico got Texas, and they're trying to take over South America at this point. So yeah, the first year has been mostly successful. We're still fighting Spain, but I think we're going to be able to handle this pretty easily. And we've gotten a naval invasion into whatever is left of the Netherlands, because I want to get some land from them, because soon will come the wars against formidable foes, like the Swiss, the Italians, and the Germans. Now, the Swiss, I don't think they're going to be too hard. The biggest issue is mountains. And mountains are just going to be pain. So yeah, that's like the year one report. All right, we've managed to encircle the Dutch army over here, which is wonderful, because that's six whole divisions, and it lowers their front to just that. And it takes away their port. It's pretty good all around. This has been a great success. Oh, and Japan is going after Cote d'Ivoire just because Japan owns Alaska. And I guess that's their weakest neighbor now. So I guess Japan's going to be helping out the U.S. This is unfortunate for Cote d'Ivoire. I was kind of rooting for them, but uh, now they've got no chance. They've got, they're fighting two of the major powers. All right, Amsterdam is about to fall. 
Wonderful. Yep, there we go. As the troops are moving in. Oh, they managed to get a troop in. But there we go. We got it. Is this enough to capitulate the Dutch? It is. Wonderful. In an interesting turn of event, it turns out that Hungary was still alive. So now we're at war. So it looks like the Battle Royale is going to take us deeper and deeper into Europe. I wonder if it's eventually going to just drag us out into Asia because, I mean, I bet Transylvania and Bulgaria are both pretty weak relative to like Luxembourg and Switzerland and Italy. So we'll see where we go. All right, the Germans declared war on Luxembourg, but Luxembourg seems to have troops ready, so they're actually taking a lot of land from Germany really fast. This is actually very entertaining to watch. All right, we have also declared war on Luxembourg, which is perfect timing because I'm pretty sure, yeah, they moved everything off of our border to go fight the Germans, so this is rather convenient. All right, Luxembourg, I, you had a good run, but I'm sorry, your fight is over. We've just sawed Switzerland in half. Now that's a lot of damage. All right, we've deployed the first of our big artillery tanks, so hopefully we'll see how it goes. Also, I love the Unimata, it looks very cool. All right, we're approaching the end of 1939, and our offensive into Poland is going pretty well, but I just wanted to give you a quick look around the world. So Europe has really consolidated with us, the Germans, the Soviets, the Polish, and the Italians being the major players left in Europe. The UK is imperializing Africa. They're trying to take on Sudan, but I don't know how that's going. I think they've been stuck here for a little while. Asia has really unified compared to last year. As you can tell, lots of big powers. Japan's actually going after... They're going after a lot of people, I know, but they're going for mostly taking back like Manchuria and eastern Siberia, like coastal Siberia. Uh, the US is fighting Mexico, but luckily Mexico is standing its own and honestly I'm really happy because in all my tests literally by now the US like their borders were like down to like where Colombia's are and they were just they had like absolutely steamrolling so I'm glad to see that Jap the US got a, a bit slowed down. But they're obviously going to be OP like if we just look at their factories look at that 173, 135. Oh, they might actually have less factories than us. Maybe, maybe. I don't know about their dockyards but so we're on par with the US so that's pretty neat. Brazil is kind of big. Africa is kind of the same. Lots of wars going on here. Um, and Algeria kind of long, though. But yeah, that's the state of the world. Uh, Alright, today is an important day for our Navy's history. We have gotten our first carrier, the converted battleship hull, named Joffrey. I like that name. It's a good name for a carrier of the Bjarn class. Joffrey shall serve us well, even though he's incredibly outdated. I'm pretty sure he's the only carrier in the whole world right now. All right, this is pretty big. The Germans just declared war on us, which I was kind of expecting. I just was hoping it wouldn't happen so soon. Um, we have a tiny army ready to react, but we are not ready. Luckily, uh, Ukraine, we can just leave a small task for here just to protect the border. But yeah, this is about to be pain. And in other updates, the UK is going hard on colonizing Africa. They just capitulated Algeria, and I think they're going after Morocco. Yeah. So yeah, this is what the world's looking like. America's pushing down into South America. They've pushed past the Panama Canal, maybe? Yeah, that's the Panama Canal, maybe. I don't know, it's around there. And yeah, this is what the world is looking like. And now comes the pain. All right, looks like we're having our first big naval battle of the game. Let's see. Oh, looks like, just kidding, we already had a few. Looks like we took out some German light cruisers and destroyers and Ooh, looks like we're taking out a big chunk of the Navy. Yeah, we got two carriers at this point. Yeah, what can I say? Our fleet composition is interesting. Two carriers, two heavy cruisers, and then a couple destroyers and cruisers. But it doesn't matter. They've got nothing that can compete with us. So I think we're just going to obliterate whatever's left right here. There we go. Another light cruiser, two light cruisers. Wonderful. The French Navy shall reign supreme from the coasts of the Baltic all the way down to Madagascar. All right, at this point in the war, we are pushing the Germans on all sides and we're just enclosing onto Berlin. All right, the war is going really well so far. We've gotten a decent sized encirclement over here and we're about to saw Germany in half with our heavy tanks over here. All right, we are on the doorsteps of Berlin. This war has been costly and they actually managed to push back our Songdom in half. And unfortunately, I'm not sure how, but Ukraine has made a bit of a comeback. I've left a defensive force, but I think they took the supply hub. My army's not been having a good time. And I don't have enough planes to maintain air superiority everywhere, which is also not ideal. All right, so the war has turned slightly against us. As you can see, we've lost a decent amount of land. And that's because I forgot to build air bases, or at least to develop them. So we had a bunch of planes just sitting in stockpile. We still do. 
and no airports to house them. So I'm trying to build up a bunch of airports at this point, because then once we get air superiority back and just have enough cash, we'll just be able to mow them down. But for now, we just need to hold the line and wait for that. And then the other thing that happened was over here, since we're so elongated, they actually cut off the railroad. And I couldn't understand why we kept losing here until finally I realized the railroad was cut off. So we had to build up this brand new railroad over here to connect it. It's still not, it's still undersupplied, but at least they're getting something. All right, another year is coming to end. We're launching a new big offensive into the Germans. We got a mix of greens and reds. We got those Christmas colors going very much in spirit. I think we've got this now that we actually have airports, things have gotten significantly easier. Europe has remained mostly the same, except for the UK. They've been expanding a lot. They're actually invading Ireland right now as we speak. America is basically about to take over all the Americas. They're at war with Brazil, but, you know, Amazon jungle is not optimal for combat. UK has also popped off in Africa quite hard. India has become superpower by 1941. And Japan has gotten a pretty large empire for itself. And yeah, that's the state of the world at the end of 1941. Let's see if we can beat the Germans by the end of 1942. All right, we finally have beaten the war with Ukraine. That took way too long. And uh, for some reason, Bulgaria decided to take this in the peace treaty. So maybe this will help us against the Germans. I'm not quite sure, but I think the Germans are finally done for. We finally have the railroads and the airports needed to push. I totally forgot about building up airports. I just haven't done it in so long just because we have such a massive air force. And because the German AI, or at least their industry, is enough to like make them, you know, just not fall flat on their face. But it looks like we're at the gates of Berlin, basically. All right, Berlin has fallen. The war is finally coming to an end, and it has been awfully brutal, with the Germans sustaining more than 3 million casualties, and we're about 2 million. But we've inflicted more than a million more casualties, so that's not bad, and we're on track to beating the Germans before 1942. In a surprise turn of events, Bulgaria just took Rome, and it looks like Bulgaria is actually going to capitulate Italy, because Italy is, yeah, 75% towards capitulation. That is crazy. Who knew Bulgaria would rise up? I'm going to guess that as soon as the Germans capitulate, which they're on the brink of, we're going to go after Bulgaria, and we'll see how that goes, because Bulgaria may be stronger than we think. Also, yeah, we have this huge encirclement of the Germans here. I think this is probably like 24 divisions, maybe more. 11 there, 8, yeah, maybe 30 divisions in here. Yeah, it's kind of nutty. All right, we're closing in on this pocket, and they were at minimum 30 divisions. Oh, and they just fell. Let's take a look at the German casualties. 4.5 million compared to our 3.6. That's pretty good, although this last final push into Germany has been rather bloodthirsty on the Germans' behalf. We've been having to fight tooth and nail to try to push the Germans back, but we're making some good progress. But unfortunately, we might actually have to push into Scandinavia, but maybe the Soviets will help clean that up. It is 1943, and time really flies when you're trying to capitulate Germany. So Europe hasn't changed too much. Bulgaria has become rather strong. The UK has begun colonizing Africa quite hard. They own probably a third of the continent. I say begun, they've been doing it this whole game, but they're going hard at this point. The US and Brazil, I don't think the borders change much because Amazon, rainforest, no supply, it's painful. Japan is continuing to expand. And in fact, they've got a naval invasion in Australia right now. And Asia basically, I think, looks the same. India is still superpower. And I think none of these orders are going to really move just because there's no supply hubs. And I'm pretty sure the AI doesn't build any. So yeah, they're just going to be all dying of attrition over here. All right, it is February 19th, 1943, and we have finally beaten the Germans. And we are now at war with the Italians. So we'll have to see how this goes. I think the Bulgarians are honestly going to take care of them because the Italians are not doing so hot. They have six to 18 divisions, which is pathetic. 1943, yeah, they've been wiped off the game basically at this point. I'm pretty sure Malta has more divisions than them. Malta has, okay, one to three. All right, it feels like more because every time I navally invade them, it, they fail. All right, well, the war against the Bulgarians and the Italians is going really well. We've just been sinking the Italian Navy. They have no chance against our carriers. In fact, I don't think Italy even has any heavy ships or capital ships. So let me just quickly check. Oh, apparently they do have two heavy cruisers, but they're nowhere to be seen, and we're just constantly just bombing them and sinking them, and they're just not having a good time. And Bulgaria, although they managed to beat up Italy, is really not that strong, and we've just been rolling over them. All right, it's taken so long, but I think we're finally going to be able to successfully navally invade Malta. All it took was getting an airport here with 200 casts. Yeah, I know there's some Bulgarians over here causing trouble. I don't really care. I just want to take Malta. Because I'm pretty sure Malta is also a fort. Yeah, it's a level one coastal fort, which is also pain. But I think we're going to break through. Yes. Yes. Many brave French boys have died on the beaches of Malta. But now we shall join the empire. 
All right, I think the war with Bulgaria is basically drawing to an end. They're already at half a million casualties and they're near capitulation. I think as soon as we take Athens, we'll be good. We literally just need the army to go. I'm actually a little bit curious who we're going to declare war on after we take out Bulgaria. I think it's actually going to be probably Turkey or these guys, the Chuvashia. Because I thought it was going to be the Soviets, but honestly, the Soviets are probably more powerful than these guys. Now, I don't know. Maybe they are doing doo-doo because they've been stuck at war with these guys for a really long time. But my theory is that there's no supply hubs. All right, it looks like my theory was correct, and we've declared war on Turkey, which at first glance seems to be fine, but Turkey has gotten kind of big, so this might be a little bit of a field trip for us into both the Middle East, Central Asia, and into Africa. So we'll see how this goes. Holy cow, we've just caught the Turkish in a huge naval battle. It's not necessarily big, but we've already gotten 44 of their convoys and a light cruiser. Yeah, I think the Turks were trying to move some forces, but yeah, they uh, our navy is kind of wrecking them. 48 convoys, that's insane from one battle. All right, we've pulled off a successful naval invasion into Rhodes, which is great because they had an airport here, which I think has been trying to naval bomb us. Their naval bombers have not been very successful. Well, I say that, they actually did manage to get a submarine, but this should allow us to get some more fighters in the area. Yeah, it is actually red. Yeah, they are. Yeah, look at that. They've got like 1,400 planes trying to naval bomb our carriers, but... Our carriers got fighters, and we have decent AA, so we've only lost a couple of submarines, which isn't too bad. Alright, we are approaching the end of 1943, and the world has been kind of cleaned up. As you can see, we are basically dominating Europe at this point. We're still at war with Turkey. We finally broke through Istanbul, which took a little bit of time. The Soviets finally managed to capitulate one of the guys here, so they're kind of starting to get their historical borders. India is even chunkier than it was before. Japan really hasn't changed too much. The UK has done a great job of ter in terms of colonizing Africa, and I think right now they're just going after the Caribbean. Yeah, they're, they've taken about half of Cuba, so I guess that's good for them. The US and Brazil are still in a standoff on the Amazon. All right, at this point, Turkey is not having a good time, but even though we've taken Ankara and Constantinople slash Istanbul, yeah, it's Istanbul, they are still rather far from capitulating. They're only 30%, so I think we're going to have to drive all the way probably to the Persian Gulf before they capitulate. All right, we're going to see if we can cut off the entire Turkish army, because if we're able to reach over here in Adana, we'll be able to cut off the entire Turkish army that's left here. And it looks like that's going to be a sizable chunk of their army as well. Especially considering they've only got 37 to 63 divisions. I bet a lot of them are in here. Like right here, there's like six divisions, five divisions over here. And another two right here. All right, I think the Great Encirclement did pay off because they are down to nine to 26 divisions at this point. All right, I'm not quite sure how this has happened, but we capitulated the Turks so right with Yemen. But there's two Yemens. There's Yemen right and Yemen left. They both have separate cash. Capitals. Oh, it looks like this is a colony of Yemen. I'm not quite sure how that works because Battle Royale is supposed to prevent that. But basically, we got two Yemens. All right, so we have been constantly fighting and winning. And at this point, the game is just throwing us a bunch of weak people. So like right now, we're at war with Tana Tuva, which is kind of lame. And we've been just at war with people over here that have been really weak. So in order to finish this game, I think it might be fun to declare war on the UK, because the UK actually has a decent amount of forces. And we've got a couple of Marines ready, and we have a couple of armies ready to land once the Marines land. All right, there we go. We have finally successfully landed in the UK, and now let's just roll them over. All right, London has fallen, and soon will the British Empire. Although, even if we take all of this, I don't think the UK are going to capitulate because their empire is massive. And I didn't even realize they've taken half of Italy from us. Yeah, we should probably send some forces to figure this out. And it looks like the British are smart, and they've actually moved their capital outside of the Isles and to Cairo. While it's kind of close to the front line, this is a very good defensive position. We've dropped the first nuke on Port Said so that we can keep pushing into Egypt. Although the game says it is Cairo, it was truly Port Said, but we shall take Cairo momentarily. All right, I forgot, time was absolutely fine. It is 1945, so let's take a look at what the world is looking like. The British have taken Italy from us, but I think that's a fair trade for taking the entire British Isles. Plus, well, we've got an army here moving in to clean up. North America, I think, has remained absolutely the same. Asia, things are finally starting to unify. There's only a couple people left in the world at this point, because if we look at the current wars, the list is very small at this point compared to what it was. All right, the AI has just come up with a very interesting battle plan of where they want us to go all the way around Africa just to come back to here, what we've already taken. Um, this is some brilliant thinking by the AI. But with that being said, at this point, it's 1945. We've taken the British Isles and the UK, where is this? There it is. It's already like, what, 77% towards capitulation at 1.2 million casualties while we're at 170,000 casualties. 
yeah, we could finish this war, but honestly, it's just going to be a hassle and just painful just because they have so much land that we have to clean up. And this has been what I like to call Colonial Royale. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. We made France pretty dominant and we achieved every French person's dream of taking over the UK. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you loved it, consider subscribing.